Let's freaking do this, dude. Oh my god. Ah! Why? It's Halloween, dude. Oh my gosh, dude. This is what I do every year. It's my tradition. Let's get into it. Dude, I almost sharted. <laughs> Let's get into this pod, dude. It's the hollow, hollow pod. What are you? A bush. You're like a lesbian bush. <laughs> Why would it be cool? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Halloween. Are we live? We were rolling on everything. Whoa. Whoa. I wasn't ready. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Who's this guy? He's the old number one surfer. Is this Rob Machado? It's Rob. Spirit. It served all 31 flavors, man. He's getting older, but... He did turn 50 this week. Happy birthday, <gasps> Rob. Rob turned 50? A couple weeks ago. I know. Do you think he'll ever get old, though? In some ways, he's always looked old. In some ways, he's always looked <laughs> good. <laughs> Maybe that's his secret. Oh, dude. Well, how was your week? <sighs> Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> what happened, dude? How do you know? I don't know. I could just tell your energy. It was crazy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what happened? I mean, it was just crazy. <laughs> dude, this is our one year anniversary. This is our one year anniversary, guys. We've been on YouTube for a year. We started in our late 30s. <laughs> <laughs> Remember 15 years ago when I was like, we yes. should start a YouTube channel? We kind of started a YouTube channel. <laughs> Do you remember that? I remember. You remind me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember? I was like, if we start this channel, we'll be millionaires in 10 years. We made that Ethan Jago video. Cut to the clip. Like, we were making such beautiful stuff. Right. We were more artists. Yeah, we are artists. Yeah. Jamie O'Brien had, like, no shame. He just went straight <laughs> in. <laughs> he just in. went for it. He's always making something. Does he have, like, a agent or something? <laughs> if someone wants to join our marketing team. I mean, how fast are you supposed to grow? I know, right? Seems fast to me. I think we're on a good pace. Dude. So you know the huge video gamer ninja? He shouted us out while he was streaming the other day. What are you saying? <laughs> Sterling Spencer, do I know the rules? He doesn't know the rules. Oh really? Yeah. What? Ninja, dude. He lives right down the street. We're gonna get him on the pod one day and manifesting it. Freaking ninja. Tyler Blood. He goes to Interlight Surf Shop all the time. I know, dude. He reps Interlight. It's crazy. Ninja's on the team. <laughs> to bring it back to Halloween. Tell the story about when we were Ninja Turtles. So I remember you, me, and Justin were yeah. the three head cousins. I remember it was like, okay, they're all going to be Ninja Turtles. Yeah, it was a cousin. So my mom, she's like, you know what? I'm going to make the best costume. <laughs> so my mom is an overachiever. 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 <laughs> she's like, oh, I'm going to make his from scratch. Right. <laughs> and so she like knitted it. She like knitted this turtle costume. So it was like this thick. <laughs> and then she, for the muscles, stuffed like foam. So when the sh when she was done, I, I looked insane. Yeah, it looked good. But I'm sweating <laughs> profusely. We're all like five. Yeah, and it's sometimes it's hot on Halloween here. Halloween. So it was so hot that Halloween. Yeah. I remember I rock up and I'm just like, <laughs> and y'all are like, whoa. And I'm like, so hot. And it was scratchy. It was so itchy. Ugh. Like that. Ah. And I remember being jealous of y'all because y'all looked so free and happy in your all's crappy Ninja yeah. Turtle costumes from Walmart. Staple rubber band. <laughs> <laughs> and y'all had these plastic shells and you could spin on your back. <laughs> and I had just this soft foam shell and I couldn't spin. But all the moms were like, you look so cute. Everyone's like, wow, look how good that costume is. And I'm like, I hate it in here. <laughs> And my mom, she like still has it and she brings it out every year and like, look good, look good. <laughs> I think I was the red one. Which one's that, Raphael? Raphael. I think I was red too. Well, we have a picture. Had the nunchucks or the... Whatever. What are those things called? I don't know. No one ever knew. <laughs> Tomorrow's Halloween. Do you like Halloween better than Christmas? No. Christmas Why? is the best. I'm a Christmas guy. I feel like Christmas is so generic. I feel like anything can happen on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> like I love running into the nines like anything could anything happen. Could right happen tonight. And everyone's just getting weird.
Hey there, thrill seekers and wave chasers. This segment is brought to you by our awesome sponsor, Esteem, the ultimate destination for radical surfwear. So follow them on Instagram at Esteem Surf Co. and get some radical surfwear at esteemsurf.com. <laughs> what is this? Car fighting? Dude, this is freaking car jujitsu. Whoa. So I guess you're, it's a jujitsu match in a car with seatbelt on. Look, this guy's like going to the back and he's he like, starts you know what? Meet me back here. This is so... Look at him. He's choking him out of the... Ah! Does he have a mullet? Whoa, Sco- he's got a cool mullet. Skull it. Why are they doing this? Boring. Is this the new thing? Car fight. How do you win? First one to die. Break, <laughs> break your windpipe. It looks like a like real... If you slow mode this, I bet it would look like a sensual <laughs> love making. <laughs> I could die in your arms. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> 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 it's like a net. Na- they're getting <laughs> buck nasty. <laughs> Synchronized surf skating. Is that what it's supposed to be? <laughs> <laughs> Follow me. I'll show you the way. Together we will skate surf. We'll skate surf and he- bring healing for all the world. A lot of people hate on this, but it's like, dude, anything anyone does is kind of meaningless. So why not? True. Like, like they're just two swans in a pond. <laughs> Just <laughs> quark, quark, quark. This is love making in the surf skating world. Whoa. Oh boy. Dude, straight nuggets on the <laughs> grill. <laughs> <laughs> nuggets on the grill. Dude, straight nuggets on the grill. Is that the ref on to the side? Like <laughs> is everything clean in there? <laughs> Why is he <laughs> Does he know the nuggets <laughs> are right <rubbing>? there? <laughs> what is this training you for? I think for wipeouts. This is oh, Shane this Doran's th- new wipeout simulation. <laughs> They spray you with squirt guns? They spray you with something. Were you a soper growing up, the soap shoes? So when I was in school, there was only like two kids that had them. Yeah. And like they would crush these rails and stuff. They'd be like, (laughs) yeah, like between classes. And I was like, whoa, these guys are kind of gnarly. Soaping. And everyone made fun of them so hard. I was like, well, I'm glad I didn't get into that. (laughs) This looks sick, though. (laughs) Dude. This is a long soap. Dude. Dude, He's gaining speed. Look to the right. If he fell, he would get rug burn. (laughs) No, look at how, like, to the right. Look how grassy it is. No, right there. It's like a cliff. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Dude, this guy's Extreme soaping. Maybe this will come back. I think if you it was on TikTok and you got like Hello Kitty involved. Yeah. Like some kind of weird like ching, 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 ching. This could do it. Like he's hitting coins <laughs> and sounds. All righty, deep breath in and. <laughs> this is the way I felt. Yeah. I'm like, are you sure? Deep breath. <laughs> they always say deep breath. Dude, Whoa. this is Kelly Slater's wife. Is it? Yeah, his ex-wife. Oh, is that Pamela? Dang, no wonder he was so good at surfing. <laughs> Do you think she actually uses this? For surfing? For yeah. those muscles she has? I don't know. What do you, people need their muscles for these days? I feel like a lot of people get in shape a certain way, and then they use some kind of gimmick to make money off of. Yeah. They don't actually use... The muscles? <laughs> they don't actually... Like, she wouldn't actually use that to get in shape. Well, it makes me feel good knowing that all these ripped, muscular people, they have desk jobs. What are they using the muscles for? What do you mean? Like everyone's so ripped, crossfitters, all these, and it's like, what do they do with their muscles? Right. They're just picking up groceries. Right. Just like me. I can <laughs> I can pick up groceries. <laughs> Whoa. Jeez. This guy's everywhere. We go, He's we so go. agile. Just work, work, work. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this guy? Who is this guy? He's everywhere. So Why? in surfing, is this, look okay. at him. <laughs> look at him, little hop. Three, two. He was almost raptured. It's hanging 10 hard. Because you see some people doing it, it looks like, oh, it doesn't look that hard. Or they make it look easy. It's hanging 10 hard. I think the way maybe this guy does it, it's hard. Okay. But if you have the right board and you're on the right mushy wave, it's pretty easy. It just looks cool. Like when I was a kid, I could hang 10 so long. Yeah, just. And I like barely longboarded and I was like. <gasps> it just looks sick. I think if you do it legit in the curl of the wave, yeah. like on a heavy board, that's not really. Because it's like. Boop, 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 boop. On the soft spots, it's really easy. Mm. Almost does it for you. Dude, these soft toppers are going back <laughs> to the ocean where they came from. Oh, no. 
They're like, soft tops. Dude, they're freaking, they're trying to get off soft tops. Really? They're fiending. Oh my gosh. They're like, oh. they're going back to the mother, <laughs> mother soft top. Whoa. Here we have a group of soft toppers. Some will make it home. <laughs> Others will be destined to be eaten by live cougars. Not so lucky. Whoa. Ooh, ha, ha, ha. Dude. Is this the most extreme surfer ever? This is incredible stuff. Look at this. He's so mad. He's so flippy. What's he mad about? What's crazy is like this clip came out and yeah. it's incredible. Yeah. But like no one really cared that much. Because it's what? Like if he was on a soft top, this would have uh, gone way bigger. Right. If Romano was pushing him. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's weird. Pro surfing is like almost like this weird dinosaur thing. Like if someone saw this clip 20 years ago, they'd be like, he's the best. Yeah. If this was 20 years ago, this guy, I think this is Yagadora. Yeah. This Brazilian guy. Every wave's a flip. Oh, gosh. It's incredible. But no one cares. Like, why Why does no one care about surfing anymore? I mean, that... Because you can't monetize it? It's harder to monetize. They need to put, like, TikTok noises or something. Like, ding, ding. you did a flip. You did a flip. Right. Like, this should be huge news, this <laughs> clip. Like, this should be on the news. It should be on, like, CNN. Right. But it's just what... Like, no one will ever remember this. And he's doing something most humans will never be able to do in their lives. Like flips without straps on a surfboard. Flips without like, straps. That's hard. What's his name? Yaga Dora. We'll remember you, Yaga. Yaga, we'll remember you. Remember Yaga clothes? Yaga clothes? Yaga Yege. Oh. Yeah, Yaga. Remember Yaga? <laughs> oh, sick. Is that him? <laughs> Jeez. This is Laird University. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of work to just do that. Yeah, like, I don't know if it... You needed to do all this for this workout. Where would you store that thing? What's this thing called? The Laird 9000? Yeah, this is the Laird 9000. <laughs> to understand your surfboard better, put the board on its side and try to roll it and see how much it will roll. The more it will roll, the more maneuverability a board will have. The less it will roll, the more speed down the line a board will have. Is this true? I don't know. I, this is the first time I've heard. If you rock, you're... I think people sometimes just say stuff and we're like oh and if you put it on if you put like captions to it yeah people music. are like all right i get it must be real <laughs> whoa is this chris hemsworth this is chris hemsworth's new scooter foil watch this whoa. what <laughs> he just did a flip why did he do can can ole <laughs> <laughs> take that laird you can't stop foilers okay take a nice breath oh god uh. <laughs> she not want that nose uh. oh <laughs> <laughs> dude okay stand up go away jeez soft tops oh my gosh <laughs> see Look. this guy video will go bigger than yagadora oh because it's soft tops right. soft tops is the nerf of surf the nerf of surf there is a pro surfer named murph the surf he was a east coast surf legend i remember meeting him with my dad murph he was the in surf. greg knoll's hall of fame and he was famous for stealing the most expensive diamond ever back in the day. <laughs> what? He, he wasn't even a pro surfer he was famous for he stole this diamond and he murdered someone is he in jail i think he went to jail and got out wow and then i think he became a christian after and he wrote a book and Murph the story. Surf. But he got canceled recently. They're like, wait, this guy's like a terrible person. Oh, gosh. <laughs> but I remember meeting him when I was young. I was like, whoa, this guy's like famous just for like stealing a diamond and killing someone. Murph. Like, this the... guy's a legend. What, and uh, so, but he wasn't even a good surfer? I don't remember anything seeing oh, okay. him surf, <laughs> but he was in Greg Knoll's Hall of Fame. I don't agree with this message. I'll tell you why I don't agree. Let's let the clip play. This park is for me and the 10 people that grew up in this neighborhood. This is your area. Right here. How am I supposed to get better? Not my problem, bro. Well, where'd you learn? Why don't you agree with that clip? Because I feel like skaters are way more dicks. I think of it more of like a skate park, that concrete ball ain't going anywhere. Right. And for surfing, it's like, dude, 
surfing is like it comes and goes only so many waves only so many waves you can't compare it it says if skaters were surfers right right has anyone like hung around skaters <laughs> has anyone like hung around <laughs> <laughs> they're way gnarlier there's pockets remember when we were trying to throw the skate contest for the skate kids yeah dude it was like hurting cats <laughs> They wouldn't listen to us. They wouldn't even do the... We were, like, giving money away. And they were like, we don't... Some skaters are, like, rebellious. Like, Ugh. But I think the point of this video is to show how territorial surfers are. Maybe pick a different genre. Because okay. skaters are, like, notoriously worse than I just surfers. I don't think you can compare it. Surfing and... Like, they should have had, like, a Razor scooter guy. Yeah. Or something. <laughs> if skaters were surfers, like... Yeah, you need something else because skaters like are mean, meaner people, <laughs> like for sure. I I know some good skaters, some nice boys. Nice skaters. Yeah, I mean, ninety percent are mean. So the culture is just breeds meanness. You mean? I mean, come on. <laughs> <Have> you, <laughs> this, you could start a war. People are going bananas. He's not even doing tricks, dude. Surf skating is like this own weird world. Where you don't have to be that good at anything. I mean, they're cheering for him like he's Eric Costin in the 1990s. <laughs> That's what's kind of sick about it. You it's can, like they found a way to make people that aren't that talented feel good. Look, his whole family is crying. They're pumped, and he's just gone. He's just gone. He's just moving. He's just doing turns. People are like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if none of these people have seen actual skateboarding, like right. guys doing like triple hard flips over the ledge right a core skate group would see this and go like what he's not doing anything i'm into it i think it i love cool. the enthusiasm what? Oh, no. look at this oh, zzz, 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 zzz. Oh. oh my god this is extreme one wheeling this is inlanders <gasps> let loose this is ankles dude these guys are sick one more try bro i got it <laughs> <laughs> i know Oh my God, I love you guys. <laughs> oh, I freaking love you, dude. Pound it on camera. Dude, freaking, I wanna be with you. Wow. Is that what that is? That's like a uni taint wheel. I uni taint wheel. <laughs> so dude, they caught me ripping the other day. <laughs> on camera you mean? Yeah, TMZ. Yeah. They filmed me freaking doing my thing in the ocean. Look. Let me see. Whoa, dude. Yeah, dude. I was, I was just like, dude, get out of my way, chick. <laughs> I was doing like sick ass like front grabs. Yeah. Oh, look at me, dude. Oh yeah, you are front grabbing. Deep in the pit. Dude. What does that feel like? Dude. You see me looking at the beach, like, did you get that? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Whoa, slow it down. Oh dude. You should sell this footage. Dude, I already did. Really? Look how <laughs> thick my buggy is. <laughs> Do you need extra thick buggies? Yeah, I order extra thick. Dude. <laughs> they should have tech tech buggies. That's a good idea. Monetize. Can monetize. <laughs> Lizzie, my favorite. Thank you, Mocha. Melons. I'm hungry. It's blue. I'm hungry. What's for dinner? I'm hungry. What's for dinner? I'm hungry. What's for Earth? That's what we're on. I'm hungry. What's for dinner? I'm hungry. If we get seven more galaxies, I'll end the line right away. Wow. What's happening to us? That's someone's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> or mom. I mean, I, I put it this way. What? There's people. Just sitting in cubicles. True. Pushing paper. Like, I mean, is this that? Well, much worse? Uh, if someone was like, hey, how, what's your daughter Natalie been up to? And then you see this in your mind, like, uh, she's uh, she's an entertainer. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so you got this new trophy. So I won the world title again? It just says best surfer. WSL, they're kind of running low on money. <laughs> so they sent me the... The budget's low this year? <laughs> They didn't have quite as big as budget. But you still got it. Because the girls get equal pay now. Oh. <laughs> Dude, congrats. Thanks. Look at this. This is me when Bree's like, you hungry? Whoa. <laughs> not crazy? It's, that's us when people throw hot dogs at us. <laughs> All right, guys. We're going to look at, over the years, Sterling Spencer's top five voiceovers. You ready? Ready. <laughs> What's your fifth favorite? Aki. You're the best around. Yeah. Cut to the clip. You're the best around, Ock. Nothing's ever gonna bring you down, Ock. You're the best 
Ock around. Ock. Nothing's ever gonna bring me down. I like it when he's like, easy doggy. Easy now, Ock. Remember, these doggies are more scared of you than you are of them. Nice doggy. I could watch a whole movie's worth of Aki just walking around getting voiced. Oh, over. I could, just him at the library. He's so funny. What's your fourth? Floater, 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 floater. Ah, good. No, more like this. Yes, like this. Come on, get in with me. Like this? Yeah, that's pretty good over there. Yeah, like this? Yeah, like this? Like this? It's pretty good. Maybe later I can get your mama's number. So dude, this clip, Adriano was in Costa Rica training. Looter. And Adriano got into this huge uh, controversy because he, he won this contest just doing floaters. Oh. And floaters like one of the easiest maneuvers you can do. People are dying laughing like him training for floaters. <laughs> like, all right, number three, what is it? Back in my day, I used to do a front flip over to the second paddling and put my jersey on. Let me just slip on right off. And, oh, all right, here we go. I'm gonna hit you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just so classic. Like, this guy's just going for it. <laughs> all right, what's your top two, brother? Jeremy, wait up. Jeremy, it's me, Billy. Jeremy, hold on. Can I please have your signature? Please, I ran from over there so far. Shoo shoo. My knees, they sting. Go it. Go on, read some books. Oh, won't give me his signature. Oh, what do I do now? Why? I hate you, Jeremy. I hate you. Uh, uh, dang it. Well, this clip fell into my lap. First try, I was just like, yeah. nailed it. Go away. Left. Didn't think anything of it. Dave posted it. The next morning, I wake up and Dave's like, dude. Bruh. The video has like 20,000 views and every back, night. And back then, that's like super viral. Yeah, that's like. This is like pre-YouTube anything. Yeah. This was like, what, 20,000? Like, how did it even go viral? I guess Facebook. Emails, too. People would yeah. email clips. So, dude, Jeremy Flores was Facebooking me, like yelling. He's mm. like, I will teach you a lesson. I will teach you the ultimate lesson. <laughs> Speaking in French and stuff. And I was like, holy crap. And this is like, nowadays, people get made fun of all the time. So it's like, right. eh, whatever. It was the first one. Right. So Jeremy followed me for years. Everyone's like, dude, Jeremy's here. He's he's gonna Like at certain parties and events, award mm -hmm. shows. Almost two years. He was chasing me. So you're looking over your shoulder everywhere you went. <laughs> Looks he hits you with a baguette. So finally we get to Hawaii. We're at the Surfer Pole Awards. And like I feel this like sharp arm. Like it was real bone <laughs> but I remember it was a really bony arm. And I was like <laughs> and I was like, Oh, I can't breathe and then I woke up. Shut up. And he's holding me, talking to this group of people. This son of a bitch. I remember Kelly was watching and like all these famous surfers are at the Surfer Bowl Awards. He choked you out. He choked me out. What? And I don't think he, I didn't, I don't think he realized how quick, you can like how easy that. I was. He <laughs> thought it was going to be more of a Struggle. fight. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oops. That was easy. That was easier than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> It was ever like, dink. <laughs> Took you out, dude. In seconds. Oh, it's hilarious. And then what happened right after that? <laughs> um. So, dude, he was he was like hammer drunk. Oh. And I was like, he had that crazy look in his eye. Mm -hmm. His eyes are red. And he's like, all snappy. And he was like talking to the people, holding me. He's like, <laughs> he's like everyone thinks I hate Sterling, but it's not true. I love him. Look. He's and like he <laughs> kisses me. On the cheek or something? On the mouth. No, we did I not. I swear, we have pictures of it. And so everyone's like, okay, it's all good. And then he starts strangling me again. I'm like, help. <laughs> <laughs> what an odd way to show love. So he was like about to end my life. Yeah. And dude, this famous surfer, Michael Ho. Okay. Mason Ho's dad. Yeah. He rips him off me. And Jeremy's like about to kill me. It was like the final blow. <laughs> like it was 
it was going to be done, though, for me. <laughs> and Michael steps in front of his fist, and he's like, if you hit him or me, you will never come back to Hawaii ever again. No, so he had your back. And he almost punched Michael. He was like, I remember Coco Ho, the daughter. Yeah. She's like, Dad, no. No. She was like a little kid. And you're just like, what are you doing? <laughs> I think Michael Hull knew my dad back in the day because uh, my dad and Mark Fu were besties. Right. So he like stepped in to save me. That's crazy. And he, Jeremy like came to senses and Michael Ho took him away and, and like they had him escorted out because right. he was acting he was drunk. kind of crazy. And you're just like, whoa, bro. I was like, whoa, dude. To this day, if you ran into Jeremy, Jeremy Flores at like a world market, what would happen? He'd just be like this. Yeah. All right, so this is it. The top clip voiceover you know i was thinking you and me later on could get a little itch if you could scratch that itch you were trying to get me on my shoulder no <laughs> yeah people say i look like keanu Reeves with this beard but i don't i don't you know i don't have much of an ego you know i just roam the streets the streets are mine i just scoop, wait wait a second is that danny hold on hold on babe I think that's Danny. He owes me six bucks. Danny, give me that six bucks. Or I'll throw you in the ocean. High five. Just kidding. I'll, I'll get it from you later. Just, you got my beeper number? Yeah. All right, ho, let's go. I run this city. <laughs> I don't know who this guy is or was, but it, for me, I think it's the funniest voiceover I've done. We've teased it so many times, but Flashback Boomerang isn't anywhere to watch. Dude. We're finally putting it up. So we're going to put up Flashback Boomerang, director's cut. This is a movie we made with Aki in Peru. All right, guys. So right now, Flashback Boomerang, the link is in description or somewhere. Director's cut. Director's cut. It's a weird final cut. Weird movie with Aki, Mark Acalupo, our legend boy. Check it out. I know we're not conspiracy theorists. Yeah. But have you ever looked into Antarctica? I've recently seen some videos about it. You can't fly over it. You can't fly there unless, like, you're guided in by military. Yeah. So there's this one guy back in the day where he said he went to Antarctica. This is, like, the 1920s. Okay. And he said Antarctica was actually warm in the middle. Whoa. And he said it was, like, an oasis in the middle of the cold. Dude. And, like, uh, there was, like, giant elephants... Or like mammoths and <laughs> green fields. He wrote it in his diary. Hmm. And um, he was like an early explorer. And he said he, uh, you know, it was just white. And then all of a sudden it was just like, poof, an oasis of green, lush, feels warm, perfect temperature, he said. And what was going on? He flew in and he hung out with these people that had like blonde hair. Weird. So Icelandic people. So... Now the conspiracy is like Antarctica is actually like this hub Hmm. of like uh, secretness. Like all the secrets of the world are there. And that's why no one can fly over it. Even if you try to Google it, you can't move the icon over it. It stops. (laughs) Everywhere else it moves and it gives you the latitude and this and that. And you go to it and it's like... So people found a place like, what's the farthest place we can go do secret stuff? Well, that's what they think. Like, um, like what's up there? Like JFK's? I don't know. Aliens? Aliens? J- what all? What I are? Mean, aliens are real now. Oh, so. True. Bigfoot's just up there, like <laughs> smoking one. Uh, Buzz Aldrin. Yeah, the moon guy. He went down there. Oh yeah. There's like this big pyramid. He said something about it's pure. Like, this is the most evil thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and, he's and he been- had a heart attack. Oh, yeah. And they had to rush him out. Buzz Aldrin, he's been on the moon. You Supposedly. Think <laughs> <laughs> the moon's in the Antarctica, just sitting there. I'm not a flat earther, and I'm not against... I feel like start saying the moon's fake, it's like, all right, you're 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 gone. <laughs> you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> when do you start heading down that road? Conspiracies are gnarly, because like like the Maui fire thing was a an interesting experiment to watch, because people had like full-blown conspiracies within minutes i know actually there's a there's yeah. a smart city being planned and biden's wearing a ca cia suit and it's actually stretchy and it's actually a woman in there 
<laughs> and like people would just be like <laughs> after like five minutes. I'm like whoa, dude! Like maybe it just burnt down. I don't know. You can't keep up these days. And like we've talked about before, people just love it. It's like this little. Ooh. Well, I feel like we're natural born explorers. Oh. And we, it's like we have nowhere to get it out because we know everything now. <laughs> oh. So now it's like we just humans love magic. Ooh, I love magic. Like all the, all all the history books, yeah. they all believed in magical gods and dragons and this and that. So I think it's like conspiracies. It's just people want they want to believe in magic still. Yeah, explore it. And there's also like a 1% stuff is true. Right. So with that 1%, when it happens, it's like <gasps> anything's possible. <laughs> the world's flat. I don't understand the flat thing. Yeah, you you have to stop there. You got to stop. That's why I like the moon stuff. I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to believe that we did it. Because <laughs> I feel like... I haven't researched it enough. Right. And it's, it just seems like a slippery slope. Well, every dude that approaches you at a bar or somewhere and starts talking conspiracies, I instantly just go, <laughs> I'm like, step off, bro. Someone said that we're keeping Laird, um, what's the word? Relevant. Relevant. Dude. You think that's true? Laird owes us dude, so much money. Cabby, you know. We're, we're Can't they sponsor our movie or something? <laughs> yeah, sponsor. Like, our... Give us 50K. Yeah, a month. <laughs> <laughs> We've given so much to Laird uh, and Kelly. Yeah, but Kelly's got his moon shoes. I was talking to this guy who knows Kelly really well. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, Kelly's never going to understand you, dude. I'm really? Like, Why? He's like, his brain is like reversed. Hmm. Like when they would hang out with, when, with him when they were younger, like they would say the funniest thing ever and Kelly would be like, what? He didn't get it. And then Kelly would say like some weird Egyptian stuff and he'd be like, ah, and they would be like, what planet is this guy from? <laughs> so his brain's just different. Uh, yeah. I think that's why he's so good at surfing. Mm. I think he can like, cause his, it's like his brain is reversed. Right. So he can like see stuff we can't on that, waves. So that's why he doesn't have a sense of humor. <laughs> right. I, th I think that's why he doesn't understand our sense of humor. Okay. I think he has a sense of humor. About Egyptian stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been walking in the park and like people walk by you and they won't even look at you? They're just like, and then they see your dog and they're like, oh, how, ah, and they like rub it again. They're like, oh, look at that. And they're like, ah. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what about me? Yeah, they don't like humans. <laughs> There's so many people out there that like would, would be fine to see a baby die, but if a puppy died, they'd be like, oh. <laughs> It's just so weird to walk right by me and then love on my dog. Yeah. I don't it's get that. so weird to me. I guess because you, the dog doesn't talk back. <laughs> Dogs are just pure love. I'm more of a cat guy. I've been forced to become a cat dad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because Wyatt loves cats. Yeah. And I'm starting to get it. <laughs> it's a different, it's kind of like Kelly. Okay. They're like reverse love. Right. They are love if they want to give it. They're like, you can't ask for it. Nope. You have to just be sitting there calm in a cat. Not look at them at all. And then they'll just come and be like, yeah. Dogs are like, boo. A dog, they, it's equally given back and forth. A dog's like Burt Kreischer <laughs> and a cat's like Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> cats are just pricks. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just sit there and <laughs> so you're saying Kelly's a prick <laughs> <laughs> so what are we are we a surf podcast what is this stupid show comedy just comedy mixed with a surfing world comedy and we love surfing I used to love surfing I need to get back into it Dude, the happiest I ever seen you is when you're surfing I used to not care about anything and I totally got why surfers are poor <laughs> I remember that one night we had the best surf. Yeah. We caught the longest wave at the cross. We're sitting at your house and you're just like, oh, I get it. <laughs> and you started talking like, whoa, dude. Like, dude your hair was growing out. <laughs> My bald spot filled in. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Surfing is just, if you don't surf, only a surfer knows the feeling. You, It's like this weird, like, like oh, I don't need anything. I just want to ride a wave over and over. I mean, okay, think about it. Okay. You're sitting there waiting for a wave that comes from thousands and thousands of yeah. miles away. And it pushes you. And it's it's just energy. Yeah. It's like force. The wave 
it's not the wave is just energy right so when it when you get involved into the wave it's it's transferring energy it's god energy right and it goes into your cells and you basically are dancing you know how good dancing feels no <laughs> <laughs> if you're a good dancer so you're just on a wave and you're dancing you're just doing what feels right the, yeah. there's no one like you should be no <laughs> yeah you're just like in the ocean no one around like I just remember trying to explain it to uh, our cousin, my cousin Gray. I was like, think about it, dude. Something's like pushing you. And all of a sudden you're like, what? And it's invisible. Yeah. And you're like, it's like, it's hard to explain. It's, it's, it is an insane feeling. It's the closest you can get to God. You heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I remember trying to explain surfing just to a non-surfer when I was kind of a surfer. And they were like, oh, cause like a skateboard, you're like, <laughs> and a surfing, you're like, whoa. It's like a, someone pushing you in a swing, but. It's super spiritual. It does. It's something about it. I get why people get addicted for sure. When I'm in Hawaii, I'm like in the 12th dimension. Yeah. Because like, after my brain injury, I became more sensitive to energy. Yeah. And not to sound weird or anything. Get weird. <laughs> <laughs> but like in Hawaii, winds come from really far away. Mm. And when they they would hit me, it was almost like uh, messages, but not in words. So I would feel these stories go in and out of me. Whoa. Like uh, the Native Americans talk about it. Okay. How like um, our ancestors are in the wind and they have they come with stories and stuff. And I'd be out like at sunset point like by myself and I'm like, it's so beautiful. And like these winds and mm. energies from like so far away. And I'm like, whoa. And no drugs involved. No drugs. <laughs> <laughs> and I had... um. I would get these songs in my head. Yeah. That I music I've never heard. Cool. Like Hawaiian music. And it was like the most beautiful music I've ever heard in my life. And I'm like, dude, but I couldn't I could never put it to like a piece of paper to write it out. Right. But I could hear it. Ooh. And it's it's weird. I wasn't hearing it ears, obviously. <laughs> yeah. It was just like it was crazy. I kind of feel like, like in your mind. I tapped into like the ancient Dang. Hawaiian spirits. So you'd just be sitting out in the backyard and hear the breeze and feel. I'd it. be. I would go serve Sunset Point every day, and um, it's beautiful there. Hmm. It's one of my favorite spots. And yeah, I would get these Hawaiian songs in my head, and it was kind of like Breda is. You know that is. Breda is is like the godfather of Hawaiian music. Okay. He 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 sings that song. Uh, Somewhere over oh, the yes, rainbow. I freaking know that yeah. guy. And he's like that huge uh, guy. Well, oh, I'm Gabby. How do, how do, how do? Something Gabby. He's talking to Gabby. So freaking, yeah, I would get these crazy songs in my head. And then I'd ride the waves and like, <laughs> it's like, man, like this wave was sent to me from like yeah. Antarctica where there's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> Buzz Aldrin sent you the wave. So when you do that, all day long, you're so tapped in. Dude, you're relaxed. And you get so many endorphins and so yeah. many good feeling stuff and vitamin D from the sun. And oh, I need it. The water's cleansing your cells. Dang, you're making me want to go to the beach so bad. Dude, when you, when you surf all day in that environment, it's like you're just totally cleansed, mm. head to toe, physically, spiritually, mentally. Some of the best feelings I remember is going surfing and come back, taking a shower and be like, ah. Oh. <laughs> uh, isn't that called being surfed out? <laughs> <laughs> being surfed out. <laughs> I remember I asked my dad once, I was like, I'm like, dad, what is smoking weed like? Yeah. He was like, huh? Backhand you. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, hmm. It's like that feeling when you surf all day long. Yeah. I was like, whoa, so why don't we smoke weed? <laughs> and he like turned off for a second. He was like, sometimes you have to work for feelings. Ooh. And I was like, whoa. Papa. <laughs> <laughs> You're a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> You're a pirate. But I thought it was such good wisdom. You know, when you can just take a drug. Right. It becomes a problem right when you can rely on a substance when you gotta like work for finding the wave catching the wave, yeah. surfing the waves like you know like and you're moving mm. and it's good for you well this is one of the questions i had 
it was what keeps you going back to surf. And I was thinking about that. And I, a lot of what we just said covered that. <laughs> but yeah, what keeps you going back to surf? The ocean is the only place where I can go every single day. And it's like I go in this trance of like total content. Like escape. Ocean is one of the most like mystical, spiritual places that we don't even understand. Because why do people just go to the beach and stand <laughs> well, staring at this thing? I can't stand people that bring sound systems to the beach. You're covering up God's music. Dude, th- I remember a friend of mine was like, hey, we're going to the beach, but we forgot our speaker. Will you grab yours? And I ignored it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, they showed up. Did you bring your speaker? I was like, oh, I didn't. <laughs> I'm like, why do I want to listen to Chumba Wumba while I'm on the <laughs> beach, dude? Because so many people are just, they are not tapped in. Dude. They're just busy being Well, I'm busy. constantly on YouTube, and I can't not be in front of a screen. So, but when I'm at the beach, I'm like, <sighs> and then you hear like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, what is love? Turn that stupid yeah, thing off. That's pretty good. <laughs> I guess if they're drinking, they're there for other reasons. Yeah, dude, the ocean is unexplainable. Like, any, like I can't go to Chuck E. Cheese's every day. <laughs> but when I was a kid, I was like, this is the best place on earth. <laughs> But if you went every day, you, you'd be like, uh, <laughs> coins, ding, ding. But you can go to the beach every single day and you're, be happy. You're right. It's true. It's like a. <laughs> <laughs> Why do people love the mountains so much? Because it's just like the earth pushed up. It's just the earth up. And I was like, I can see. <laughs> <laughs> I can see earth. It's just there. the earth up. And I, I, But I love the mountains. I go every year. Well, maybe there's something deeper to it. I can see the earth up. Maybe they're ancestors. The earth up? They're like big omas. <laughs> <laughs> big omas. Bigger omas. Omas, our grandmother. I was telling Passed this, away. I was eating lunch or something with my parents the other day, and I remember I used to eat dinner with them all the time, and she would always drop food in her cleavage. <laughs> <laughs> we can cut this out. Did she get it? And she'd always be like, and I just remember all the time being like, what the? Grandma. <laughs> Grandma, your dumplings. <laughs> Those dumplings are in your teats. <laughs> uh, you remember when Oma, we were talking about black people? Yeah. <laughs> Oma was born in a different time. Her grandmother was racist, but like the <laughs> nicest way possible. <laughs> because Ryan was like talking about dating a black girl. She's like, Ryan, you, you wouldn't actually do that, would you? <laughs> I was like, sure, why wouldn't I? And she's like, mm. Yeah, we're like, we didn't grow, like, yeah. black people were the same to us. <laughs> yeah. Like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they still are. No, we grew up completely different. Right. Black people are the same, but in her era, I was like, <laughs> wait a second. Wait, no, no, no. <laughs> like, she grew up in the racist lines and I know black and white. Part of that's sad because she, like she just was a product of her environment. Like people, well, she's her. the nicest person ever. Oh, I know. She'd do anything. But do you, do you remember <laughs> those things she would put out? Yes. It was like little black people I with think watermelons. It... <laughs> 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 so our grandmother, she had like in front of her house just figurines of black people. Yeah. <laughs> and they'd have watermelons and they're jolly. <laughs> well, I, they were called like nannies or something. She collected maids. nanny maids. Little dolls. So she grew up with black nannies. Yeah. So maybe that's, that's weird. She was fond of that. Yeah. yeah. That was her. Why like, didn't she want us to date them? But she has figurines of them out. That was her Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> she collected them. I don't get it. She loved she loved them so much. She wanted figurine. Like yeah. there's hundreds. They, I don't know. And they do they're... different things, like pushing a wheelbarrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One had like a corn husk. Yeah, they'd have corn yeah. in their arms. But dude, I do remember watermelon everywhere. <laughs> yeah, there, uh, there's watermelon and chicken everywhere. You can't cancel Oma. She's gone. She's not. With, <laughs> she's not with us anymore. But I I talk to people about that all the time, and they're like, Yeah, my. My grandma did too. Dude, where did all those things end up? <laughs> all the little with the CDs. Yeah, they're with the CDs. She yeah, you know what, and you know what her favorite movie was? Rush Hour with Chris Tucker. <laughs> yeah, she loved She Chris. loved Chris Tucker. <laughs> but why didn't she want us to date black women? She just said it one time. Maybe she was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't drink. I think, yeah. I remember one night 
Oma was up late and she was wearing one of those old lady gowns. <laughs> like and, you're wearing? Yeah, like this. <laughs> and she went into the kitchen and she said it was dark. It was super late. Something grabbed her. And she goes, let go, stop it. Ah! And she turned around and her blouse had got stuck on a doorknob handle. Whoa. But it was so funny because she said she was like, get that fuck out She's cousin? Probably. Get off me, black demon. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you, Oma. Rest in peace. We love you, Oma. The other thing about Oma is she loved Sterling and she'd have pictures of like this wall <laughs> yeah. of sterling yeah, her house was just like this <laughs> <laughs> and i i had Y'all like hated me i had one yearbook photo of me like on the fridge on the side yeah <laughs> yeah the <laughs> magnet was pushed to the side you, you and abby were like everywhere why did she love me the most well you also were the only one getting magazines printed out maybe if i <laughs> <laughs> that's what my dad said <laughs> what Y'all were complaining about me ever, and he said that. He's like, well, why don't y'all do something? <laughs> why don't you guys get in magazines? <laughs> what are we going to get, pictures of us at Little League? like <laughs> Editing? Yeah. <laughs> Picture of me just sitting at a computer. <laughs> she was a single mother with yep. five children. Yep. And she'd go work at Dunkin' Donuts. Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme? Krispy Kreme. She'd go work at Krispy Kreme all day, yep. and my dad would watch all the kids. Yeah. Big Brother Yancey. Isn't that crazy? So crazy. We have it so easy. Oh, we're so... Dude, first world problems. What? My dad, he would have to hitchhike to the beach. Right. When he was a kid. And it was like normal. And they had one board that, on the beach and they had to share it. <laughs> Just passed it around. That a freaking Navy guy left in the 50s. That's crazy. Now you have <laughs> boards coming out of my neck. <laughs> Surfboards just laying everywhere. No, I appreciate it. I feel like just because we have it so easy, the only thing we need to do is to appreciate it. Right. Like there, we can't, we can't fault. Yeah, it's us. not our fault. But if we don't appreciate it, then that's the issue. I was just thinking about this, or I heard this thing the other day where this guy was like, dude, we get to like, there's no problems in our life. We have, we're eating cake all day. Life's <laughs> easy, bro. Compared to like, you know, we all have problems. Yeah. Do you think you could do stand-up comedy? Like, seriously, people say this about you on YouTube comments and stuff like, dude, this guy should do stand-up. And I'm like, I don't know if you could do it. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. It's just, it's like an art that you... Well, yeah, it's... I feel like my humor is comes from nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, my funniest stuff is in the moment. Right. And I think stand-up comedy is like you're really good at um mapping it out and yeah you're hitting the right it's time. performing and it's it's a totally different art form i yeah but I, I personally would be curious to see you try to do five minutes i could do like you see the crowd work stuff guys do yeah, yeah. i could do that that kind of stuff just make fun of people yeah. and laugh but i feel like <clears throat> dude i was listening to matt rife you yeah, know yeah. It is? <laughs> pretty lips he's so he's like the guy right now. Yeah, he's blown up. He's blown up. And he was he was talking crap about Jerry Seinfeld. What? <laughs> and I was like, hmm. I was trying not I uh, kind of like made me mad. Yeah. But I'm like is he trying to make me mad, you know, like uh, these, the way these YouTubers like, <laughs> the way these YouTubers are. <laughs> what was he saying? He's saying Jerry Seinfeld's overrated. Hmm. And I was like that's like saying like Moses is overrated. <laughs> <laughs> Moses. Yeah. That's like saying like someone who got us to the promised land was right. overrated. That's like saying Duke Kanamoka was overrated and he but he started pined. surfing. Right. <laughs> there might have been like parts of Jerry Seinfeld that were like, okay, someone else could have done that too, but he did it. But he started it. He did it. <laughs> you can't knock Dude. someone who made the path for you. Right. And he worked his butt off, dude. There's so many stories of Jerry Seinfeld in those early years where they like didn't get days off forever. Yeah, they he did it the the hard way. Like they, I remember him telling Wordless, st- sorry again. He was telling stories like there were so many Christmases where my bosses would be like, "Merry Christmas, what you up to?" And he's like, "I'm in the freaking office, dude, like <laughs> writing and yeah. working their butts off." Him and this and this is coming from a TikTok star, like yeah. someone who got it the easiest. <clears throat> he worked, but yeah, no, he, I'm not knocking he doesn't have work but come on yeah <laughs> <laughs> like 
Jerry had like the biggest show ever, ever. for 10 years and changed everything. Dude. He's making money because of Jerry Seinfeld. Probably. Like, I don't think you should say he's overrated. You know who would be the biggest goat slash white whale slash insane never would happen fantasy guest on this show would be for to me larry yeah. david oh my god if larry <laughs> david was sitting in here i don't think i could like blink <laughs> well my one of my friends who's like a big comedian like yeah. i can't say his name yeah he kind of said the same thing about jerry really and i was like dude how can you he's like i know i know it's just you know he's it's just kind of cheesy and i was like dude and I like sat him down <laughs> and he's like, well, I think Larry David did all the work and Jerry, I was like, dude, if Jerry wasn't in Larry David's life, there'd be no, he, Larry David's one of those mad scientists Yeah. and Jerry was so calm and so on the path where he could, like Larry had a meltdown every week. He quit. And Jerry would like bring him back and like, all right, <laughs> <laughs> I just think like, it's easy to throw stones. I just think Jerry, he, he was good at life too. Yeah. And people that are good at life, sometimes they don't let themselves explode for good art. Hmm. So someone like Jim Carrey, like he's, oh. he's a God. Yeah. But he, it took a toll on him. Right. And Jerry was smart enough to be like, yeah, I could go there, <laughs> but no, I'm just going to stay yeah. here and keep it. Yeah, you know, like just mellow. Cur what is it? Cars and coffee comedians. Yeah, it's just like Even. he knows. I think he knows he could be better, but he's kind of like, eh. <laughs> eh. Eh. this is nice. I mean, there's an episode called Even Steven, and he's always like, <laughs> I, "I'm always okay. I break even." <laughs> No, but I do think there is, a, like, you know, years, decades later, like, Matt Reif can go, like, hey, that was cheesy. How old is Matt Reif? 27, Six. 28. Dude, I guarantee you, just from watching him, <coughs> I guarantee you he, if he hung out with Jerry for a while, it would change his life. Right. Like, to me, Matt Reif is one of those guys that, like, can't sleep at night. Mm -hmm. Like, his mind is just like, and, like... Dude, Jerry, he's like a master wordsmith. Totally. Like a Chappelle, you know? Like, yep. So I feel like Matt Reif, like, freaking maybe, maybe cool it down a little bit. Well, he's even admitted, I was watching him on the Tom Segura podcast, or Two Bears, whatever. He was even saying, like, this isn't going to last. He's <laughs> like, I'm on a trajectory that's not going to stay. <laughs> and he's being honest, and he's like, I get it. Like, something magical is happening. He right needs now. to hang out with Jerry Seinfeld and stop saying he's overrated. Yeah, come on. <laughs> In the surfing world, we call him a Barney. What does that mean? A Barney is someone who like talks too much, like listen more and talk less. Right. Because a Barney, like a Barney's always like, yeah, I was getting barreled. And he's like, you weren't freaking getting barreled, dude. Like, you <laughs> liar. I'm like, oh, I was got like three feet of air on that one. So you're like, dude, Tony's we, a Barney. We call them freaking Barneys. Barney. Where'd that come from? Hawaii? Mm -hmm. Barneys. <laughs> freaking Barney. Matt Rice a Barney. I think but he, he's a nice guy. He was just in Pensacola like two weeks ago. He was? Yeah. <laughs> My friends just went to his show. Suck his teats. Do you believe in karma? Yes. You believe in karma? Yes. Okay. So if you put out good, good comes back. <laughs> put out bad, bad comes back. It doesn't work the way you want it to work. It's not as black and white. Well, it's not tit for tat. Oh. You know, we're energy just like waves. Yeah. So it's like kind of what you're putting out comes back. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, you know, if someone does you wrong, you're never going to, like, get back what... I see what you're saying. You know, it's never going to be how you want it or whatever. Like, like revenge. Hmm. You know, <clears throat> you'll never be able to get revenge the way you want it unless you, like, kill them. But even then... And then it sucks. And then bad karma comes back. And then it re reverses back. Even though you're hurt. Yeah. I struggle with this all the time. Hmm. Like when people hurt you and they just forget about you. Like, oh, we're good. Like, eh. Yeah. And they don't, they don't, you know, listen to you or try to apologize to you in the way you need it to heal. Mm. It's really hard to move on. But what about like in a simple fashion? Like, okay, I'm going to give this homeless guy a hundred dollars. Will, will the karma world come back and I'll get it. But you're saying it's different. I think so, but it might not happen tip for tap 
Hmm. I think it's more like, uh, you know, you plant seeds and you come back and it's like a beautiful forest is grown. I also heard it has to be a, with pure motives. It's not like, all right, I'm going to give this guy a hundred dollars so that I can get good stuff in my life. I think it's an energy field. Whoa. Not, uh, it's not analytical mm-hmm. or like if you went on a mission, I'm like, I'm going to plant as much karma. Plant karma. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, see I feel like Jesus talked about this a lot. Yeah. You remember the guy that w- came up to Jesus and he's like, I double, I pay double tithe and I do this and I do that. Yeah. And he's yeah. like, oh, cool. Why don't you give everything up and follow me? And yeah, he's like, yeah. what? And he walked away sad. And he was just like, and then when the guy was walking off, Jesus was like, it's hard for the rich to get to heaven. Yeah. Like and, a camel through the eye of a needle. Yeah, and I was like, what? <laughs> I remember reading that as a kid. I was like, what? And then he was like, the sinner. Yeah. He's like, this guy's closer. Wow. And I'm like, what? Jesus. So, like you said, it's your, it's the pure yeah, motive. Your heart has to be pure. It's the freaking pureness, dude. Wow. <laughs> dude, so what, did you get sucked into the Y2K craze at all? Yeah. Did, did you think it was real? Back in Y2K I crazy? Mean, I was 14. <laughs> Isn't it weird? I like, thought the world was going to end. Dude, I have a friend whose dad put a pipe under their house, a bomb shelter, filled it with Uzis and food. And on Y2K, they all they thought China was coming. Because they said the, the clocks wouldn't understand. <laughs> I don't get it, dude. I think these back road, like, country churches tricked a bunch of, like, people that, where you better say, you better get ready, it's a rapture. Well, I feel like with religion, one of their go-to moves is everything's ending. Yeah. To I, get you to... I heard this thing Follow. that humans like romanticize about living in a post-apocalyptic apocalyptic <laughs> world. Like we like to think, oh, the end's coming. You know how many like into the world things we've survived? And we're only 37? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I, th- I think that's a religion trick. Like every religion's got their, the world ending. And so, and I think it helps people to follow order. Yeah, like, oh, Frank. Whoa, I gotta, yeah. uh, Jesus is coming with the trumpet. Dude, I remember being on an airplane and my mom all the time be like, are you saved? <laughs> <laughs> John. My, my, she'd be like, Dad, John, is he saved? Because like she in always- the rapture. Yeah. The rapture if I was going <laughs> to die. And I was, I, w- I was like, yeah, I'm saved. All the what time. Does it mean? My sweet mom would always ask if I was saved. Are you saved? I was listening to a comedian saying like, if you were a kid in the early O's, you got the- worst part of christianity <laughs> why <laughs> just like all the funkiness because we had the most rules yeah like think about the 70s they were freaking just yeah, yeah. going for it <laughs> whatever all our parents like did drugs and slayed each other and then <laughs> we got around and like we couldn't do anything <laughs> you got to do easter egg hunts we had to go to church three times a week yep <laughs> and everything's a sin and <laughs> It was really f- spot on. Like that early as Christian kids, like we had it the hardest. Everything was a sin. I remember I went to your church and then my dad made us go to First Baptist. <laughs> yeah. It was scary. Oh my God, dude. It was the worst. Didn't your mom love to sing? That's why we had to go there. Because she was like the number one singer. Opera singer there. Yeah. Via de la Rosa. And Lydia. I remember one time. Lydia was gonna make me sing oh my. Silent Night with her. Oh, I love that song. <laughs> on Christmas. And it's like a a congregation of like ten thousand people. <laughs> and I was like, No, I don't wanna do that. And she's like, You're you have to. <laughs> and I was I remember so scared. And then Abby was gonna do it too. And so I was gonna sing with them in the middle, like Silent Night. And they she had this like plaid suit she was gonna make me wear and she she used to comb my hair in the middle and s- she would hairspray it so hard like <laughs> where I could flip it like a helmet like <laughs> and she always said you won't get lice that was her excuse <laughs> hairspray <laughs> killed lice <laughs> I remember it hurt it was so yeah. tight like <laughs> and freaking out I, I was gonna have to sing silent night and I was so scared and my dad finally was like Lydia I don't think you can make him do this <laughs> And I was like, Whew. oh, dude. And Sandy Sansing used to sit in the front row. <laughs> such, local, <laughs> such local humor. So First Baptist was like. The who's who. If you're the, ri- like the rich of the richest came. 
and they'd all sit in the front. So <laughs> Sandy Sansing would be, Sandy Sansing's like the biggest car dealer. Oh, dude. And he's the biggest personality, the biggest schmoozer. I love it. <laughs> Sandy Sansing. So yeah. my dad was sitting in the second row with all these rich, I think he was like trying to climb the <laughs> ranks of like rich people in town. Rich church people. So all the richest bankers, they would all sit in the front. And it was like this kind of like this ego, you know, who's, uh, they would fight over the front seat. Yeah. Like, so like we would come like extra early. I'm like, I've been in a church where they're not, they don't let you save seats. It's like, we save souls, not seats in this church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some churches like you have to pay for certain <laughs> seats, like <laughs> thousand bucks. Oh, churches. <laughs> dude. So you were saying the other day. Native Americans don't have allergies? Dude, did Native Americans have allergies back then? Do you think? I mean, they were around a lot of fires. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of smoke. Well, now they have a an allergy forecast. Hmm. Where it's like, allergies are going to be bad on Wednesday. Uh, yeah. It's coming through. <laughs> and I'm looking at them like, did the Native Americans have... Like, were they like, ah, oh, it's fall. <laughs> <laughs> They're like... About to I'm kill getting it. fall allergies. <laughs> they're creeping up on a deer in their moccasins and they're like, <laughs> they're like, get out of here, Albert. It's like, dude, allergies has to be some new thing from all our bull crap everywhere. All our cities. Yeah. You might be right. It's dust. It's got to be like, uh, like nature. <laughs> we're, we're made of nature. How are we allergic to what we're made of? Maybe all our dead skin is built up. I think it's big cities. And when the big north winds come through, they like br- like brush all the crap out of the all city the and travels stuff. and gets to us. And we're like, <laughs> down south, we're like. <laughs> <laughs> I knew a friend that had to move away because of allergies to go somewhere else with cleaner air. I'm like, yeah, that's what I need. When I'm in Hawaii, dude. Yeah, but what about. I don't even sneeze. Our beaches, aren't they clean I'm air? I'm good out there. Oh. Uh, when I'm out there. Yeah. Like in Hawaii, you're on the beach. Right. You live on the beach. You're on an island. It's like, I remember <laughs> we were in Hawaii for months, and I was, I, I haven't sneezed once. Dude, that'd be so and nice. They're like, whoa, like I'm, <laughs> I'm the most sneeziest person I know. here. I have to edit out so many. Everyone's always like, how much coke does this guy do? Because <laughs> like, <laughs> you'd be a good coker. <laughs> Got the nostrils. You get enough. Man, well, I hope everyone has a good Halloween. What are you doing tomorrow? Happy one year anniversary. University. Anniversary. Guys, we're one years old on YouTube. Thanks for following us. Please like and comment. It helps. Hope you guys have a good Halloween. Sterling showed a lot of skin this episode. You're welcome. How's it? Thank you for watching Pinch My Salt, the hit podcast of the world's number one surfer, Sterling Spencer. You know the rules. Subscribe and tickle that like button. Pinch My Salt. (laughs) 